Hello, and welcome to week seven's video. Week seven covers uh, regression, but a little bit more in depth than we covered it back in week six. The problem I'm going to do from uh, from module seven is going to be problem number nine. Lots of parts to it. Gives me lots of chance to talk. Uh, so let's get started. So here we are. A. The multiple regression equation. It's multiple regression because there's two independent variables, not just one. Uh, y hat is equal to negative 5 plus 2 times x1 minus 4 times x2. Uh, complete parts a through e. OK, interpret the slope coefficient for x1. In other words, what does that 2 actually indicate? The slope coefficient of x1 is 2. This indicates that y will increase. It's a positive 2, so y is going to increase 2 units for every 1 unit increase in x1, assuming x2 remains constant. That is the textbook rationale for what the slope does. Increase x1 by 1. What happens to y hat? It goes up by 2, assuming x2 doesn't change. B. Oh, continue. Oh, it's still A. Interpret the slope coefficient for x2. It's a negative 4. So as x2 goes up by 1, y hat's going to go down by 4. The slope coefficient of x2 is negative 4, so it's B or C. It will decrease 4 units. There it is, assuming x1 remains constant. Determine the regression equation when x1 is equal to 10. OK, if x1 is equal to 10, then the equation is going to be y hat equals negative 5 plus 20 minus 4x2. Negative 5 plus 20 is 15. So it's going to be y hat is equal to 15 minus 4x2. Graph the regression equation when x1 is equal to 10. So in other words, graph this equation. The y-intercept is positive. The slope is negative. Since the slope's negative, it can't be c. Um, y-intercept is positive. Both of these seem to have positive y-intercepts. The y-intercept is actually 15. Here, it looks like the y-intercept is like 75 or something. Let's click on that to see it bigger. Um, Y-intercept looks to be like 65 and a half, so it's not this one. Uh, let's double check this one. Uh, seems to be going midway between 10 and 20, so the y-intercept is 15 and a negative slope, so it's B. Okay, let's go to C now. Determine the regression equation when x1 equals 15. OK, we've got to do multiplying by 15. If x1 is 15, then 2 times that is 30. So the regression equation is going to be y hat equals negative 5 plus 30 minus 4x2. Well, negative 5 plus 30 is 25. So y hat is equal to 25 minus 4x2. And it's that one. Now we're going to graph it. Again, slope is negative. Since the slope is negative, it can't be A. The y-intercept is 25. Can't be C, because this crosses the y-axis at a negative number by, so it's got to be B. Terminal regression equation when x1 equals 20. <laughs> OK, so if x1 is 20, 2 times 20 is 40. So y hat is equal to negative 5 plus 40. So that's plus 35 altogether, minus 4x2. Uh, 
Let's graph it. That's going to be a negative slope. Oh, all three are negative slopes. Uh, y-intercept is 35. Can't be B because that's negative. Can't be C because it looks like it crosses way up here about 70. So it's got to be A. And if we look more closely, 10, 20, 30, 40, crosses between 30 and 40, 35. What is the effect of changing the value x1 on the graph? Well, let's look at these. It's, there's that is correct, and that's correct, and that's correct. Slopes all seem to be the same, which makes sense because the slope here is negative 4, the slope here is negative 4, the slope here is negative 4, so the slope doesn't change. It's just that y-intercept that changes. It goes from 15 to 25 to 35. So what's the effect on the change in the y-intercept? Slope's negative 4 in all cases. And thus, we're at the end of problem number 9. Let's go through and, and review what we learned here, or what I talked about. Pro part A, we interpreted the slope for x1 and the slope of x2. Then we started changing the value of x1. It's instead of x1 being a variable, we said, x, OK, it's now 10. And we looked at the effect of changing the values of x1. x1 is 10. 2 times 10 is 20. 20 minus 5 is 15. So it's 15 minus 4x. And then comparing the graph to the line Intercept is 15, slope is negative. This intercept is up around 70 or so. Has to be this. Slope is 25, I'm sorry, slope is negative, intercept is 25. This is the only one that comes close. This has a negative y intercept. This has a positive slope. Slope is negative 4, intercept is 35. This doesn't look like it's an uh, intercept of 35, and this definitely doesn't have an intercept of 35. This is the only one with an intercept of 35. And they've all got negative slopes. So changing the value of x2 didn't affect x, I'm sorry, changing the value of x1 didn't affect x2's effect at all. It was negative 4 slope the entire way. The only thing that changed the y-intercept, which was negative. Hopefully this was helpful. If not, leave a message in the materials questions discussion board. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.